I'm going to show you something using four playing cards. I'm going to show you it with the Jack of Hearts, the Jack of Spades, Jack of Clubs, of course, the Jack of Diamonds. Keep your eye on all four Jacks because if I flick them, <laughs> you'll see one of them disappear. So these are the Hearts, Spades, and the Clubs. Now you know what to look for, so pay even closer attention than last time. All I have to do is just give them a wave, and that leaves us with just two. That leaves us with the Jack of Clubs and the Jack of Hearts. Maybe you think I'm using some slight of hands, so I'll actually do this one hand. I'll place my hand into my pocket, that way I can't get near the deck. Watch if I just wave back and forth. Now I'm left with just the Clubs. It's one card, it's the hardest one. All I have to do is cover it for just a moment. Look, it immediately vanishes from the deck. But it doesn't last long, all I have to do is cut, and I'll get that last jack to return to the top. If one jack comes back, that means all four jacks are right back at the same time. Yo, welcome to another Tutorial Tuesday. Really quickly, before we learn how to do this, I wanna say thank you to all people that are subscribing. You mean the world to me, and if you haven't done so already, just show me some appreciation by just hitting that subscribe button. And if you do, it lets me know that you're there, you're watching, and I keep making these videos for you guys forevermore. So, hit that subscribe button, do me the hugest favor, and if you're feeling extra generous, go ahead and drop me a like. But without any further ado, let's learn how to perform this four card vanish I call Jackass Forever. I just added that bit in because it sounded cool and current. Let's just learn, let's just learn the card trick. So this is the explanation to Jackass. Before you begin, you're going to need to do a small setup. Um, so let me show you how that looks. You can take any four of a kind that you like. I like to use the four Jacks. And I alternate them in this order. Uh, red, two blacks, and a red. So if you're using the four aces, you can go red, black, black, red. It doesn't matter. But this, this just means that when you perform the routine, they'll alternate nicely for each vanish. So I have four Jacks here. and. I'm going to eventually, before we begin, there's going to be an X card placed at this position, which is one, two, three, fourth down from the top, okay? And if you want to do that live, you can get the four jacks out in full view, and you can simply top change this bottom jack. So as, as, you're, as you're casually discussing, the magic hasn't even started yet, you can just top change that jack for a random X card, okay? So you can do that in live uh, performance as you're setting up. So you need to get into this position. And the other sneaky thing that I do is, is that there's a moment in the routine where I'm gonna use my pocket uh, for my hand to go in to tell people that I'm not uh, doing anything sneaky with the deck. And in my pocket, I also have another X card. So I literally take a card and place it into my pocket. And there's something quite nice about that because as you're doing one thing, you're also stealing a card to cover later on in the routine. Um, so <laughs> I haven't seen that used before, but I'm guessing as all things in magic, it's been done probably a thousand years ago by somebody else. Either way, you're now ready to perform. Now, you don't need to turn uh, all each card over at one at a time, but I do it as the conditioning for the get ready of the, of, of the first part of the effect. So, so there's a reason for doing each card at once. So it looks like this. I say Jack of Diamonds, Jack of Spades, and now as I push over the Jack of Spades to, to collect it, I'm gonna push over two cards here and turn over the Jack of Clubs, get it in myself, a pinky break under the X card, right here, okay? So as I turn that Jack of Clubs over, I've now got a break under these two cards, right? Be careful, you keep them square. Now my fingers go in and collect everything, being careful not to split this card, okay? And I use this card to turn over the fourth jack. Now by doing that correctly, it will be, you're, you're, you're ahead of your audience and it seems very natural and, and I find that even magicians, a lot of them don't realize that I've loaded this card into this position. But my position is basically this, one, two, three jacks, the third is a double with an X card and the red jack here. So let me just show you how that looks real time. 
I say, watch, we have the Jack of Diamonds, the Jack of Spades, the Jack of Clubs, and the Jack of Hearts. Now I'm in this position, which is really nice, really clean, and the trick's about to begin. Already, we are doing the dirty work. Now, I, I published something a couple of years ago in my Odyssey DVD set called The Scarlet Utility. And there's a lot of moves you can do with it, but essentially it allows for uh, slightly more visual vanishes of cards as opposed to um, doing them with different methods. And the way, the way it basically works is that underneath the spread of cards here, I'm going to find that double, and I'm literally going to let the X card flick off my finger, and then push down at the front of the cards to stop it splitting. Now when you have three, it's not a problem, but as we get further into the routine, uh, you'll need to apply pressure to stop any cards flashing. But basically, the Scarlet Utility relies on me finding the double and get like a sort of a step and flicking it off. This is because I'm getting a get ready now. So underneath, I'm here. And now what this is going to allow me to do is, as I flick these cards, one, two, three, my left hand can square this X card on top. All right, and it means it can happen really visually and it like a very snappy, quick motion. So I'm here, I'm ready to go. Underneath the deck, my finger is flicking off the X card and going under it. Now I have a nice purchase on just these three cards. Basically this card is separated. So I'm in this position. I go one, two, three, and you'll notice that I'm turning my left hand down because that hides everything. So at speed from here, I can go one, two, three, and it looks like that card just vanishes. It's a really nice moment. Once you get that that move down, you can do the whole rest of the routine. So now I need to basically reload that X card through each step of the playing cards. And the way that I do that is I kick these to square up and you're going to do like this sort of old sandwich load um, and it looks like this and it looks it looks like I'm just counting the cards one two three but actually I'm going to steal this now you can use a classic sandwich load where you get a pinky break under the X card and say one two three but I think this way it just looks much more natural so I'm here boom one card's vanish I square these up and now, at the same time, I'm getting a pinky break under this card, okay? And this happens at my side. I get a pinky break just under one card. And I'm gonna count and pull off that jack of diamonds. One, and now I have a double. I'm gonna reach in and place all my fingers in, under the double on my right hand. As I square the jack of spades on top and peel it off. At the same time, I'm stealing this double away. So, you, and you just want to be careful that you don't flash the jack of hearts under it. So, I've counted. So, I'll go back to here. I got my break under one card. One, and I make sure it's nice and square. Two, and then for the third card, I grab the double instead. Display it over here. It's three. Okay. So, I'm in now in this position where this. X card is under my center card. Uh, and if done correctly at speed, it looks really fair and really innocent and you got yourself into a very um, nice position ahead of them. So three cards, jack of diamonds, jack of spades, and then I show the jack of clubs and I don't count into the order. Three jacks. Now we're gonna execute the same scarlet utility. Again, I'm gonna let that card flick off so I have it so I have it here and now this time see you could potentially see the break here so if you apply pressure with your thumb ahead of your so you're not going to do it onto your index finger uh, you're going to press down ahead of your index finger now again when I when I wave the cards to create some sort of distraction a moment of cover my left hand is going to square that X card on top of the deck as I wave back and forth, and you can drop your hand to the side as that happens. And at speed, it looks like this. Boom, again, you're in a really nice, clean position. 
And now we're going to execute that count again, that sandwich load again. And this time you really could just do a regular sandwich count if you want, but I, I want it to look fair and I want everything to look like I'm doing the same moves. I'm just counting cards throughout the entire routine. I'm not doing anything suspicious. So again, I got this. I, I, for some reason I like to drop my hand to my side and do a, a push off pinky break, which I normally don't do, but in this routine I, I, I drop it to my side, get a pinky break. All the attention is on the, the two jacks here. And now I come up and I count. Pull in that jack onto the onto the pinky broken card. So one, I get these nice and square. My hand reaches under and pulls the jack of diamonds off. Two, and now I'm in this position. All right, and this is this is my favorite part of the routine. I say I'm gonna actually. You might think I'm doing something suspicious or some sort of sleight of hand. So I actually place my hand away in my pocket. Which is really nice, which is a really nice moment for layman because it, it's kind of like a, it makes sense, like, oh, okay, he's gonna place his hand away. And what I'm secretly doing is placing the card into my palm. And it's a bit of a modified palm, which I'll explain in a moment. But, um, and you get yourself ahead of the routine, which is really, really interesting for me. So I say, um, I'm in this position, I have a double here. I'm gonna place my hand into my pocket so I can't do any sleight of hand, <laughs> which is ironic because I'm doing sleight of hand with both hands. Um, and, and all I'm going to do is as I shake back and forth, I'm literally going to spread this card, this double, and using my left hand again, coalesce that X card on top. And you're in this really nice clean position here. The more you can show this jack as a singular entity, the better. But at this point, uh, this always gets gasps for some reason from layman. Uh, because I think it's just so fair and the fact that you framed it to sound fair they, they just they just in it and now we're in this position so I said and I, I, I you can use whatever pattern or script you like basically the, the final jack is gonna vanish too you say it's the hardest I like to say this is the hardest one and I, and I bring my hand out of my pocket and I've got the card gripped between my uh, index finger and in the, the heel of my thumb and this is the way I classic palm cards. I can't do a, 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 a standard classic palm using the, the tension between the pinky and, and my heel. And I know people have asked me to do, a, a, lot of, a lot of people have asked me to do videos on how I classic palm because it is very different. Uh, so I will do that one day. But in, in, in short, essentially, I always, the, the grip is always between my index finger and the heel of my thumb. So in this routine, it makes, it makes the vanish really easy to execute because I can come out and it's not gonna be in a full palm. I'm actually gonna allow it to tilt at this angle. So from this side, it looks like this, okay? Uh, but because I'm coming to my side, I'm gonna to turn to my left. I can use my middle finger to push the card out. So if it, were, if it was flush, my middle finger extends it here. But from my angle, I'm in a really great position and it looks ultra fit. In fact, you can spread the pinky and the ring finger to, sh to show uh, there's nothing there and what I'm going to do is as I come up I'm going to place this into sort of a paintbrush change position kind of like a window change here and all that's going to happen exposed is once the card connects with these fingers I'm not going to make sure not to go under the deck or not in it it goes right into the right in to the fingers and it's square, it's not too far forward or too far back. Once it connects here, I can really re relax tension but keep my hand contacting the card. And as I wave up, I'm gonna time it so that I literally just close the fingers. Now, to make it more deceptive, you, you don't want your thumb or index finger to move so you can begin with your fingers away from it. And then as you square, it looks like nothing happened because look how obvious this is if I move my thumb up the way. So if I'm here and I wave to change it, my hand, my thumb moving around sort of gives something away. But this, if I move my fingers out of the way, try it again. This looks like nothing happens. I'm just waving and it goes. So now I'm in this position. Okay, so if you're all keeping up, here's where we stand. X card, jack, X card, three jacks on top. So what I do to show some fairness is I, is I dribble the cards and I fan them and make sure not to fan the clump of cards and expose them. 
And this sort of just gives the feeling to the spectators that you're not being deceptive. And now we need to bring them back. So there's a few things that you can do. You can literally just find the break, palm off the whole stack and pull them out one at a time, making sure not to pull the X cards out. You can farrow the deck and then spread and have them displaced to the deck. But for the sake of this video, I very simply uh, make the first one jack appear on its own. And I do this by slip cutting the top card in and, a, and revealing that jack. And this is a really nice moment to show one jack's appeared. Then, this is, this is a really cool moment. I'm gonna clean up the whole routine whilst making the other jacks appear. So I get a pinky break under the two cards, the jack and the X card, get a nice pinky break under the two cards. And I say, if one can come back, they all come back, snap. And now I can just display, taking that double, squeezing it tight. Now watch what happens here. I say one, two, three, four. As I play, as I drop them on top of the deck, you're now completely clean. There's no X cards to find. There's no cards in the pocket. The entire routine is completely clean and, it's, and there's no nothing dirty left to find. So let me show you that at speed. And you don't have to count them. You can spread them and then, so this is what the spread way looks like. So I can display, boom, boom. What, so the first jack comes back. And if the first one does, then all four jacks come back. That's the hearts, spades, diamonds, and clubs. And immediately I'm clean. So what I'm doing by the spread, just to sort of reiterate that, is instead of just showing that they're back by counting them, by going one, two, three, four, I can show one as a double, I pull it to the side, and I can spread the other three to show that they're all back uh, on top of the deck. And then I say, and then after the fact, I say clubs, diamonds, spades, and hearts. This, the moment they are on top of the deck, that X card is ditched and lost, and you're clean to go. And that is the explanation to Jackass. All right, so I hope you all enjoyed learning that, I call it Jackass forever, but it's just because of the the film, I originally called it Jackass when I published it in my double disc DVD set called Odyssey many, many moons ago. And those keen viewers out there will know that it's directly inspired by Dan and Dave's routine called Queens, which is their take on a Bill Goodwin effect of a four card vanish. So the, now they're both great routines and, and they're, they're incredibly well thought out, but they just don't match my style, specifically the Dan and Dave version, because I don't do flourishy magic. I like to perform magic. And I think flourishing style magic is a different genre entirely because, and I've tried it, I tried it years ago. The moment you show your audience that you can do things with, with cards or coins, like flourishy style stuff, is the moment that when you try to perform magic, they just attribute everything that you do to having fast hands or just sleight of hand, as opposed to magic, mystery. And I'm not, I'm just not there for that. I'm not trying to show off to people that I can, hey, look what I can do. Uh, like, with, like but with skill, I want to show them moments that get them thinking. And I've been there, I've literally experienced it when I tried to do some flourishy stuff before and then try to show them like an ambitious card or, or sandwich routines, uh, that the audience would just go, oh my God, you like, they were amazed, but, but they were amazed by my fast hands, what people would say in Wales. They were just like, oh my God, you have such fast hands, that's incredible. And I was like, oh, that's not, if I wanted to show them I had fast hands, I would just do really quick Rubik's Cube solves or stacking cups. So it's just, it's, yeah, it doesn't work for me. So if you guys, you know, like Dan and Dave's version, then go ahead and learn that. It's just not for me at all. It's not to knock the incredible skill and thought process put behind it. It's just the style doesn't match for me. So like I said, I put this out in Odyssey and, uh, and this is my updated handling. Specifically, like you've seen, the card in pocket getting myself ahead as opposed to a different method that I used back then. And I find it so much, I find it fun because it's like I say, I'm not doing sleight of hand and I am doing sleight of hand with both hands at the same time whilst I'm telling them I'm not. And it's just for me, it just, just gives me a kick. But every magician should have a 10,000 hour trick. This is mine. If you go and check out convention vlogs by other people on YouTube, you'll see that I often pop up in them. And this is one of those tricks that I always do in those vlogs for other people. So I really have done this for many, many years. It served me very, very well. And, and it's, it's, it's almost like a good little like drill practice routine. If, if I ever feel that I'm like, uh, like I'm rusty, 
then I'll just drill this routine a few times at home and it's, it's a good way to practice because it's got a good few elements of different, uh, you know, methods and techniques uh, dexterously, slight of handily, I don't know, to warm me up basically and get me back into the swing of things. So I uh, hope you all enjoyed it. Guys, if you love uh, learning things like this and, you, and you're enjoying all the rest of the videos on the channel, I'm just asking you just to do one thing and that's just to please hit that subscribe button. It lets me know you're there, it lets me know you're watching and it helps me get keep motivated to make these videos for you every single week. So that was Tutorial Tuesday. I really enjoyed making this one. It's been a long time coming. I'll be back on Thursday for more live magic and then we're back on Sunday for the live Sunday sessions. You already know what they're all about. I'm just preaching to the converted. I'll see you guys soon. See you on Thursday. Thank you all so much for tuning in. <laughs>